When discussing medieval literature in terms of genre, we are faced with several problems. The most obvious one is the fact that our terminology and overall understanding of literary genres is a modern construct. This certainly applies to the sagas. Not all the terms we now use for the various types of sagas are present in the medieval manuscripts themselves. By classifying a saga as a particular genre, we are often employing criteria that may have seemed foreign to the original audience. The taxonomy of Icelandic prose literature is mainly based on two parameters, subject matter and internal chronology. In other words, when we classify a saga, we normally look at what the saga is about and when the events it describes happen. Throughout this course, we will see a number of genres from medieval Iceland. I want to explain the most important ones now and illustrate the main differences between them. First of all, there are the Eastlendingasur, the sagas of Icelanders. It's this category that is our main focus in the current course, and the three sagas we use as our point of reference are all sagas of Icelanders. By comparing the three, we come to understand that despite an undeniable unity of design in terms of plot and types of character, the Eastlendingasur as a genre is surprisingly diverse. Irpigya saga is the regional history of a certain district, and the place by itself is what keeps the storyline together. It has no real protagonist, and the structure is highly episodic. Njalsa is different. It has a more explicit narrative thread and centers around the same characters throughout. Grehtis saga has a single protagonist and could even be called a biography. But on the whole, sagas of Icelanders happen mostly in Iceland, with occasional trips abroad, and the characters are mainly historical individuals who lived in the country. The events are set between the settlement of Iceland, which began in the 870s, and the country's conversion to Christianity, or a few decades after it. The conversion happened around the year 1000 AD. Our next category are saints' lives, stories of holy men and women, both those translated from Latin and other foreign languages, and those composed originally in Icelandic. This is a fundamental genre in any European literature during medieval times, and it is presumably the first type of prose literature introduced in Iceland. The oldest saints' lives in Icelandic are composed in the early 12th century, long before any of the sagas of Icelanders assumed a written form. The third literary genre are the legendary sagas, Fornaldarsögur. The Icelandic term literally means sagas from antiquity, since they describe events that are set in the northern world before the settlement of Iceland. Here we find stories of quasi-mythical heroes, warriors who are endowed with superhuman qualities, who spend their days fighting monsters and giants, and live for hundreds of years. The legendary sagas are much more stagey and fanciful than any other saga type. Some of them have strong ties to the poetic Edda and cover the same ground to a degree. To take one example, Völsunga saga, one of the legendary sagas, recounts events from the German Nibelungenlied, material that is also reported in several Eddic poems. The fourth saga type are the chivalric sagas, Rittarsur. These sagas are both indigenous and translated, and they describe the adventures of distinguished European knights and princesses, kings and queens. King Arthur and his men often take precedence in these sagas, as do Tristan and Isolde, Alexander the Great and Charlemagne. The chivalric sagas were Iceland's window into the world of the European romances, and they were highly celebrated in the 14th and 15th centuries. There are more types of sagas, but for the context of this course, we will stick to these four. Numerous theories have been attempted with the intention of explaining the causal and temporal relationship between the various literary genres, but the current scholarly consensus is that they developed side by side. 
One genre did not simply substitute another, even if changes in the literary taste make some types of sagas more prominent than others at a given period of time. It's a dynamic process where all the constituents influence each other. Even if each genre has its specific set of narrative motifs and traditions, influence easily travels between them.